Welcome everyone! As promised, I'm back again with another Halloween doll. But this time, it's part of a huge collab here on YouTube. I was lucky enough to join 13 other doll customizers in bringing you this big celebration of the spooky season. Check out the videos from Val Kitty's World, The Dolly Geek, The Doll Fairy, Moonlight Jewel, Kira's Workshop, Jackie O, Hextian, H. Alley Crafts, Etalan, Enchantarium, Delightful, and Anastasia Custom. My victim for this project is a Katrine Demu doll from the Monster High range. She's one of my favourite bases, so I'm excited to work with her again. I prep her as usual by cutting off her hair and removing her factory makeup. For this creation, I will be only using her head, but I have a plan to use her body for a future project. It will actually be for a character in my tarot card series. Let me know in the comments which card you think it'll be for. I will be returning to the tarot series very soon, but with Halloween and Christmas coming up, as well as a few exciting collabs, I unfortunately won't finish as many as I had hoped this year, but that just means there's lots to look forward to in 2022. I start the face up as normal using my Caran d'Ache watercolour pencils. I sketch out the basic eye shape and then try my best to make both sides symmetrical. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can start deepening the colours. I decide to give her bright red eyes to try and up the spooky factor of my character. I then go in and draw some wrinkles around her eye socket. Using some chalk pastels on a small fluffy brush, I can start to map out her eyebrows and I can refine the shape with a kneaded eraser. While I have my pastels out, I also start adding some shadows around her eyes. I had quite the journey brainstorming the idea for this creation. I started by thinking of all the more traditional Halloween characters like werewolves or witches, but I've seen so many amazing dolls in these themes already and I wanted to make something really unique and not have to worry about making something that's too similar to something already out there. I then thought about making a mummy type character, which led me to thinking about an ancient pharaoh or something like that, and then my brain went to the sphinx statues in Egypt. I thought it would be cool to create some kind of hybrid monster, and since the sphinx has the head of a woman, it made a really great option for a doll repaint. The sphinx exists in both Egyptian and Greek mythology. As well as having a human head, a sphinx also has the body of a lion with the wings of a falcon. At this point of the face-up, I do my favourite step of adding a shadow to the top half of the eye. I think it adds so much dimension and drama. So for this spooky doll, I make sure to go in even darker than usual to create extra drama. Especially with her pale white skin, I love the contrast this creates. I then go ahead and add her eyelashes with a super sharp black pencil. The last step before going in with paint is to draw in a guide for the catch lights with a white pencil. And so once that's done, I can go in with the smallest brushes I have and start adding all the tiny details with acrylic paint. I start by making the eyelashes a dark and opaque black, as well as painting some black into the eye socket for added depth and dimension. I 
I then can add the catch lights in the eyes and paint in some striations with a pale red for added details. To make them really stand out, I add white highlights to her eyelashes, as well as some small highlights around the face, on the waterline and in the brows, as well as on the nose and lips. To bring her to life even more, I give her some freckles or imperfections, as well as some grey contouring and some thin grey veins around her temples. When it came to her body, I knew I wanted to keep her very thin and agile, so I ended up taking less inspiration from a lion and more from a Siamese cat. I love how lithe and sinewy they can look, and I also thought a black and white colour scheme with the pop of her red eyes would be more spooky and fitting for a Halloween doll. I sketch out a super quick blueprint and then can start to create an armature out of craft wire. To start building up her frame, I go in with hot glue as well as tin foil and some pieces of masking tape here and there. I try to bulk her up as much as I can while still keeping in mind that I will be applying another layer of clay on top. I also make an armature for her wings out of warbler thermoplastic, however I end up going with a different wing shape in the end, but you'll see that later on. I decided to use clay from La Dole. I have never worked with this material before, but I have read lots of positive feedback from the BJD community. For the first pass, I try to cover up all the armature as best I can, but I don't worry too much about the exact shape just yet. With the first pass dry, I can take some sandpaper and smooth out any sections that need it, and start on a second pass that's more focused on shape. To still make reference to her lion part, I wanted to give her a luscious mane, and to create that texture, I start from the bottommost part of where I want the mane to be, and start almost wiping small sections of clay up her chest. This leaves a beautiful raw edge at the bottom, which will act as a stylized tuft of fur. With my new warbler armature for her wings, I repeat the process of adding a simple first pass of clay, waiting for it to dry, and then adding that same texture. This time, the texture is meant to evoke the image of feathers. I was thinking about creating different textures for the fur and the feathers, but I really like the cohesion throughout the body, I think it really brings the whole thing together. On one side of the wing, I do many small feathers to create the fluffy underside, and then on the other, I create fewer, more elongated feathers. To give another nod to the lion, I create a tuft for the end of her tail. The lion is actually the only member of the cat family with a tufted tail, so I thought it would be nice to include. 
I create a tear shaped base and then add the fluffy texture just as before. I was originally going to keep her factory ears, but at the last minute I decided to chop them off. I create a first pass of clay around her head with lots of texture around the frame of her face to help blend it. I use some Gorilla Glue to attach some clay ears I crafted off camera. I like how they lay flat against her head. I imagine it would be more aerodynamic for her when she's flying. Once the glue is dry, I can add some more clay to blend the ears into her skull. I slip her head onto the armature and use more hot glue to keep it in place. I also use tons of hot glue to anchor the wings into the holes I left in her back. Then with more clay, I can finish creating her mane, simultaneously blending in her head and wings into her neck and upper back. I wanted to add another element of red into the doll to tie it in with her eyes, so I decide to give her some open scars on her torso. I'll finish them off later, but for now, let's start shading the doll. To help blend the face, I add some grey pastel chalk dust. As I mentioned earlier, I was really inspired by the colouring of a Siamese cat, so I also start adding darker greys and blacks to the tips of her ears. Once the ears are done, I can also add some blacks and greys to her feet, blending it up the legs. And I also add the same effect to her wings. I create a makeshift shield out of a piece of paper to prevent any pastel dust falling and getting onto the body of the doll, which I want to remain a perfect white. The last bit of pastel colouring left to do is on the tail. To intensify the black even more, I head outside and use some Citadel spray paint. Since I don't own an airbrush, this was the best way to create a perfect gradient using paint. Once I'm happy with the gradient, I can also add some freckly, spotty texture to her body and wings by half pressing the nozzle on the cam. This will make the paint kind of spit out and create a lovely splattery effect. I keep the tail separate to help with the painting, so once everything is dry, it's time to glue it back on. With the glue set, I can smooth over the joint with more clay and add some fluffy texture for visual interest. I loved the idea of giving her some battle wounds, but I really don't like gore, so I decide to go full fantasy and give her rhinestone blood. I paint in a base layer of deep red and then glue on some tiny dark cyan rhinestones. And with that she's all done. Please like this video to support my art and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Also leave something in the comments below, I really love hearing what you all have to say. Without further ado, I present the Sphinx.
thank you so much for watching, and remember, this video is part of a huge collaboration, so there are heaps of other amazing doll videos to watch. The links to all of them will be in my bio below. See you next time! Have an awesome day!